all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Wanna slice, got to roll the dice. That's why, all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Look, all my life, been grinding all my life. Sacrifice, hustle, pay the price. Wanna slice, got to roll the dice. That's why, all my life, I've been grinding all my life. Hello, welcome to a very special edition of Club Shay Shay live on YouTube. I am your host. I'm also the proprietor of Club Shay Shay, and the guy that's stopping by for a conversation and a drink today really doesn't need an introduction, but I'll give him one anyway. He's been selected to the Pro Bowl every year he's been in the NFL. He's a Super Bowl champ. He's a three-time first-team All-Pro, about to be four. He's a member of the 2000 All-Decade team as a punt returner, one of the fastest men to ever play the game. I believe he's currently the fastest man playing the game. The most dangerous man in the NFL, and he's not a defensive player, and he doesn't wear 300 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyreek Hill, also named as Cheetah. How you doing, Reek? Doing all right, man. Ho I am doing all right. I just wish you had that same energy when you said I had no hands, but... No, 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 that's it. not what I said. That's not what I said. I said you're not a natural hand catcher. Come on, man. You got hands. Obviously, you got your wide receiver. They just don't pay you thirty million for no reason. <laughs> okay, okay. We'll get we'll Come get on. to that in a little minute. Come on, we're gonna get to talking today. We'll get to talking. We're gonna get to talking today. Cheetah Bow, you uh -huh. got the name for your grandma. Mm -hmm. How did you get the how did she come up with Cheetah Bow? Well, growing up, my whole family called me Bow Bean. I I had several nicknames. Bo Bean, but Bo kinda kinda stuck with me, you know, throughout my whole entire life. Everybody knows Bo Jackson. Right. You know, Bo Jackson was a, a Incredible athlete, he did it all. So once I got to the league, man, you know, Bo, Bo was already taken. Right. You know, so we, we so my grandmother, like she kind of came up with something. She was like, you know what, we're gonna call you Cheetah Bo. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm a huge animal guy. I right. love animals. And it, it fits. It, it definitely fits. When, what was your expectations? Because when you first got into the league, well, I will give you this, Tyreek you've turned yourself into a hell of a receiver. Because when you first got to the league, you right. were mainly a returner. Kick returner, punt returner. They bring you in a couple of plays on third down. But you work your tail off. You run the route tree. You can run the out, the in, the dig, the go, the shake, all of that. Right. What was it that you said, you know what? I'm more than a gadget guy. I'm more than a returner. Well, for me, man, like, I, like so my parents, my grandparents, they did a great job of raising me and just believing in who I am as a person and as a player. You know, um, I, I grew up in a small town, mm -hmm. you know, where a lot of people, you know, may not have the same opportunity that I may have had. But, you know, I, I knew once I got the opportunity to be able to play on, on a big stage, on a big platform, I had to make it count. Right. You know, so I wanted to, to be different. You know, I, I, I like there's a lot of guys in this league that play receiver. But I tell guys, look, I play offense, man. Like, right. you can't coach what I do, man. Right. You feel me? So for me, for somebody to just sit there and just call me a gadget guy, I w like I want you to add more to that. Just right. say he's an offensive weapon. Like, right. Like do that. You feel right. me? I rather you call me that instead of just a, a gadget guy. Right. And I and I still don't consider myself one of the best receivers because, you know, um, I can't do what some of those other guys do. But I know what I can do. I can play football and I'm smart. But they can't do what you do. They which exactly. <laughs> which exactly. That, which is why I say like you can't coach what I do. You feel right. me? So. That's it, it, to to each his own. Right. I'm looking at you, and last week you didn't win the ball game, but you put up a monster day. You had nine catches for a buck 46 and a touchdown. Mm -hmm. You watched the team that the Raiders played, and Devontae Adams, y'all have very different ball games. Right. He goes for buck 77 and two touchdowns. When you play a team and you see the previous week a wide receiver goes off, are you thinking, mm-hmm, <laughs> you your boy about to eat? Uh... Yeah, sometimes, man, um, especially, but like you say, like, me and D.A., we got different games, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, he's more of a finesse guy. He's more of a of, of, a, of a release guy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So our, our game is, is so different, man. So, I like, I am i wouldn't sit here and say that the Chargers, you know, got, got a bad defense because they allowed D.A. to go for 177. But what I will say is um, I'm fortunate enough to play with a good quarterback, you know, and a great head coach who's able to put me in position to make plays. Right. And we've been able to see that all year. So I don't want to sit here and take all the credit for that. When are you surprised when guys try to press you? 
because, like I said, you're one of the probably five or six fastest guys to ever play at the NFL. Right. I believe you're currently the fa- – and we're going to talk about this because there's a lot of guys that want to challenge you say, nah, it ain't Tyreek. And Shannon, oh, you need to stop saying it's Tyreek <laughs> because it's not. <laughs> so they've been coming on my show, setting me straight. They've been hitting me. I'm like, well, damn. So – but are you surprised when you see a guy, you line up in the slot or you line up outside the numbers, are you surprised when you see a guy like, bruh, are you really about to do this? Man, believe this or not, I rarely see press. Like, I haven't seen press in like two years. <laughs> and so it's crazy. Like, during this whole entire year, like, when we see press, like, me and Jalen, we automatically think it's cover two. Right. You feel me? And most, like, 99% of the time, it is cover two. Right. You, or, like, it's some form of zone. Right. So... We 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 don't see press, and when we do see press, you know the referee is holding his hands up like this, like touchdown. <laughs> you make him smell deodorant, yeah, huh? Like you may you, <laughs> find him smell some deodorant, man. It's a long road trip. I've been, played 14 years, and I never had a situation where even when I was playing with the Ravens, we come out west and then we stay. What have you been able to do? So how how does that? Because we're routine. You right. know, you, you, when you're at home, you go to practice, you go to, you know, you have meetings, you go to practice. Get your massage. You get your massage, you go back home. Right. But on the road team, is on the road trip, especially two weeks, how, what, what, do, what do you do? How do you, get, how do you get into a rhythm to make sure you're still able to function at a high level? Well, this is kind of new to me also as well, too, because in Kansas City, we didn't do nothing like this. So right. for me, I've been able to, like, fly my whole family out. I made sure that, you know, um, I got the same schedule with seeing my family seeing my mom, seeing my sister, seeing the kids, um, seeing everybody, you know, who I regularly see during the week. Right. And um, as far as practice-wise, I I try to make everything the same. Um, So that's rep count, that's um, making sure that uh, I study plays during the night and stuff like that. So everything everything is typically the same. um, And... As a team, you just, just doing it on the road. Yeah, yeah, we just doing it on the road. And as a team, we've just been spending time together. Right. So we had a we had a comedian come in on Wednesday. Right. Was uh, he good? We had like four comedians. Oh wow! Of Dang. different of different races. You okay. Know what I'm saying? So uh, I believe the night we doing something as a team. Right. That's so unbelievable. That's great. Just trying to spend, just finding a way to spend time together as right. a team. Right. You know, because we're a young team. Right. And and you know, getting to know each other outside of football. And yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that right there is, is like a whole new level, man. So, but I feel like once I got to this team, like this team already had it. You know, they just needed a, they just needed a voice inside of the locker right. room. So, I mean, once I got here, I kind of accepted that. You, I'm looking at your numbers. You still have a chance. You need to average 100, I think 124 yards over the next five games, uh-huh. and you break Calvin Johnson's record of uh, 1964. When you got to Miami, what what was your goals? What were you thinking? What, cause, you know, a lot. Of, there, there's been a lot of talk. I was not in that. I said Tyreek's gonna be Tyreek. Now I don't know if he's gonna have a, a whole bunch of 60, 70 yarders. And damn, lo and behold, you got a bunch of 60, 60 70 yard touchdowns. Sorry, bro. What what was what Sorry. was your expectations of when you got to Miami? To be who I am, man. Like I I, I feel like you know everything happens for a reason. Right. Man. You know I, I feel like. As great as I am, you know, my guy would never steer me into a direction that I don't need to go in. Okay. You feel me? So once the idea of Miami came across my mind, you know, and other teams, because I I was an avid Miami fan. Right. And other teams were, like, calling. I was like, nah, it's a no-brainer, Miami. You know what I'm saying? Because I've seen what Coach Mac, uh, I've seen what Coach McDaniel can do. You know what I'm saying? I, I know that he's an offensive guru, and I know, and I knew that Tua was, like, he was him. Right. Like, people people don't realize Tua was him. Like, coming out of college, he was him. Yes. He just had some bad, he just had some bad, you know, situations. Right. You know what I'm saying? His first few seasons. So he got hurt, got nicked. Got hurt, you know what I'm saying? His hip, so he's not right. able to throw the ball how he want to throw it. So I was like, bro, I'm going to go here, and I'm going to have the best – I'm going to have the best year in my career. Right. I'm going to see it. So when I got there, that, that, that's all me and Coach Medea was talking about. He was like, bro, we going to get 2,000, bro. Really? Yeah, that's the first thing he said to me. He didn't say, hey, welcome. He was like, 2,000. First thing he said to wow. me, I'm like, man, you must be reading my mind. Like, oh, let's you, go. You was thinking that too, huh? Like, automatically, man, because like we all have goals. Like, I'm not one of them dudes to get paid and just sit, shut it down. Right. Like, I want to I wanna continue to get better. I right. want to find ways to get better. 
And like I say, everything happened for a reason. My receiver coach is Wes Worker. Yeah. Wes Worker, like, he literally holds me accountable every day. Right. You feel me? And as a player, like, I need that sometimes right. because I, I'm lazy. Like, I know I can get lazy. I can get, you know, complacent in where I am. And he'll be like, Reek, I need you to wake up. I need you to realize, like, we only got one shot to do this. All right? right. So let's get back to work. Let's focus on the details and fundamentals. And let's keep grinding, baby, because we need you. And as a as a, as a player, uh -huh. I, I need that sometimes. So I feel like every coming here to Miami, man, it, it really helped my career because I needed, like, a different change of scenery. And it, it, it's paying off. About that. You really had had a great situation. You had a great offense with Andy. Andy oh, was yeah. dialing it up. You had weapons around you, so they really couldn't double team you because you had Kelsey. You mm -hmm. had Nicole for a couple of times. You had uh, uh, Sammy Watkins. Mm -hmm. You had Robinson. So you've had guys around you. You had a great offense, and you seem like, dang man, Tyreek in Kansas City, Mahomes. You have the quarterback. Nothing needs to be said about him. Right. When did you think? that there's a possibility that, you know what, man, I might not finish my career in, here in Kansas City. It, it got like that probably like mid-last season. You feel me? Like, uh -huh. I'm the type of guy, like, I, I I love playing ball and I love, you know, being by the team mm -hmm. because football is a team sport, right? Correct. And it would be some games where, like, I get two targets, I get three targets, and we'll go into meetings and my coach would be like, hey, we, we got to get you involved, we got to get you involved. And I'm like... Nah, y'all need to get me involved yesterday. Don't tell me about it today. Exactly. Like, you know, <laughs> like, you know how to, you, like, you know I the do. feeling. So I'm calling my agent every week after they say some, some crazy stuff like that. Like, bro, I got to get out of here. So bro. let me ask you a question. Because you, you, obviously you're not a guy to bite your tongue. And right. obviously, so you go to, did you go to EB? Did you go to Andy? Like, bro, what's up? I mean, during the week of practice, y'all throwing me all these balls. I get into the game and I get two targets. What, what, what's See, really going uh, no, on? No, 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 no. I'm not like that. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go to anybody. I'm, I'm going to go to my position coach. Because I deal with him more than I deal with them. Right. You feel me? And I'm going to go talk to him. Then but he what gonna... if he ain't relaying the messages that you would need relayed? And I'm out of there. You see where I'm at now? I'm out of there, man. But I love EB. I love Coach Andy Reid. You know, those guys really helped me get to where I am today. You know what I'm saying? As a young player, I feel like they really developed me. Right. And, like, shaped me to who I am today. So. Did you, did you, did you have a conversation with Mahomes, Patrick? Did you say... I'm sorry, bro, but I, I'm out. Uh, I just need I, I need to do this. This is not anything to have to do with you. This is about me and what I think is the best for my career. So check this out. I, t I talked to Andy and I talked to uh, PM. I, I talked to both of them, okay. Patrick Mahomes. So I'm like, so I talked to Coach Andy Reid and I'm like, Coach, like, I don't even need to be the highest paid receiver. I just want to be taken care of and I want to stay you know, with Kelsey, I want to stay with Pat. I want to stay with my brother. So you had that conversation to end it. Look, I had that take conversation care of your boy, and just, and you, I'm here. Just, just take care of your boy, man. Just make me 25 M's, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Match me with A.J. Brown, and I'm cool with that. He was like, okay, okay, okay. So we get back. They, they, they got it to 25 M's, but the guaranteed money wasn't, it wasn't looking right. So right. me and Drew going back and forth with that. I'm like, Drew, it's fine. Drew's like, no, we can get more. We can get more. You know how agents are. Right, like, of we course. Can get more. And that's what he should so do. So then I talked to Pat. He was like, yeah, 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 yeah. He's saying the same thing. Bro, we got to get you back. We got to get you back. I'm like, yeah, bro. I want to come back, bro. Like, let's make something happen. But make the money right. But make the money right. Like, just make the guaranteed money sound sound right. at least right, yeah. bro. Like, That 100 million and you give me 20 million guaranteed, that don't make sense to me. Exactly, exactly. Okay. So then, like, Miami had called. They was like, look, we just going to go all out. We going to give you 72 million guaranteed. And then I was like, bro. I can't turn that down. No, no, you can't turn that down. I can't turn With that down. With no state income tax either. With no state income tax. I'm basically living in my house for free right now. So I'm like, yeah, we can't turn that down. Right. Great weather. Did you did you go to did you go to Andy and ask them can they match this? Or were you were your mind already set? I gave you every opportunity. I didn't really need 30. I didn't really need what I got. But I just needed you to make the guarantee. So yeah, money, we right? did. So we did. So we did. We actually told we actually told Kansas City what Miami offered, and Kansas City was like, nah, we just gonna trade them. So then I was like, okay, bet. Like, that, that really goes to show how valuable I am to them. Right. You know what I'm saying? Opposing to how valuable I, I could be to Miami. So Correct. I was like, just sign the deal. Let's get it done. And then we just going to make some shake, man. Right. So here I am today. No hard feelings. No hard feelings. No hard feelings, man. Like, I feel like you can't mix. I, I can't mix my hard feelings in with the business side of all of that. I still got love for all of them boys. Patrick, Kelsey, uh, Veach. Coach Reed, EB, I still love them. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. 
But just know when we if, if we do play them, if we do see them, it's it's showtime. It's showtime that game. <laughs> You try, you try to go for two, three bills? I'm, what I, you try I, to go for? I, you play, let's just say for the sake of argument, you play the Chiefs in the playoffs. You try to go for three? They better have two people on me. That's all I know. <laughs> the, cheetah, the cheetah will be arriving in Kansas City or in Miami. I don't care where I be at. So let me ask you this. At midseason, they asked NFL execs. Mm -hmm. if they had a vote, MVP, Offensive Player of the Year. You got the most votes for Offensive Player of the Year. If you were to get 2,000 yard receiving, forget Offensive Player of the Year. They've been receivers to win that award. Should you be the MVP? No, I don't. I don't. I don't. I mean, I don't think so. Like for me, I really don't look at awards and just go crazy mm -hmm. like that and just be like, oh, I think I deserve this. Like I've been in this. I've, I've basically accomplished everything that I want to accomplish. I feel like won a Super Bowl, but I, I can do more. I want to continue winning Super Bowls. The award thing, that's cool and all, but I want to continue to win with my team. You know what I'm saying? I, I feel like n nothing can, you know, outweigh winning another championship. Right. You know, MVP is cool. Winning MVP is cool. That's cool for my kids. That's cool for my family. That's cool for, you know, the legacy. Mm -hmm. That's cool for yes, my legacy. Yes, yes. But, but once I win, the like, but winning the Super Bowl, it just hit differently, man. Right. I, I, I saw it, man. Like, it's something that, different when you come into the room. It's like that's Super Bowl champ Tyreek Hill, not Pro Bowl Tyreek Hill. That's Super Bowl champ. That's Tyreek Super Bowl. Hill. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> they say your they say your name a little bit different. They do. They, they it, it does. It does. You like okay? Check out that look. So yeah. <laughs> okay. You started off. I had Steve Smith, um, Smitty. I, I know Smitty. We go back to 2001 when he made his first Pro Bowl, mm -hmm. and he and I were discussing. And <laughs> you know, shot o'clock, clock, I, baby. I'm listening. Oh, you listening? I'm locked in. So, like. Okay. So here. You, yeah. you, there you go. Here, give me. Take that one. Shot o'clock, Tony. So he and I was having a conversation. I asked him to list his top five receivers. Uh-huh. He didn't put you in his top five. And you saw I, you saw I got like. You ain't got the reek in there? Is there, has there? is there any beef between you and, I mean, because y'all kind of like the same, I mean, he's not as fast as you, obviously. Right. But physical, tough, tenacious guys uh, turned themselves. He came in. He was a returner. He went to Juco, too, though. He went to Juco also. Exactly. He was a returner. Mm -hmm. Point returner, kick returner. Made the Pro Bowl. That's how you got it. <clears throat> Taught himself to become a great receiver. Exactly. Also like you did. <clears throat> so did you take offense to him leaving you off the top five receivers? Nah, not not for real, man. You know why? Why? Because I make 30 M's a year, bro. <laughs> why not? Why would, I, why, why would I value another man's opinion? But I will say, once he once he tried me with the no hands part, I was like, bro, like, you really trying me. Right. Like, because I feel like I got some of the best hands, you know, in the league. You know, granted me not being the biggest, you know what I'm saying? I feel right. like I got some of the best hands in the yeah, league. Yeah, but, but here's the thing. I think when you, you, you're... Uh... Like you said, you look at I look at Devontae, and I look at Devontae, and he's like he would be more of a prototypical because he's six one, uh, angular, long angular body, long limb, and he's just he's fluid. You are power. You are power receiver. You're explosive. Right, right. Which which the NFL has never seen before. Right. You feel me? But I feel like I I, I can catch with those guys. Yeah. Just like those guys can catch. When I, I when I look at you, Tyreek, I've been around a lot of guys that could run, but they were track guys. I was in the league with Sam Grady. He won the silver medal in the 84 Olympics. I know who that is. Uh, uh, James Jett, mm -hmm. he was on the gold medal winning team in 92. I've seen guys, but I've never seen a guy built like you. You are a track guy. You are, but you 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 have track speed, but you're a football player. When those guys, when I, Willie, Willie Gall, when I, Ronaldo Nehemiah, when I look at you, I don't see track. I know you have track elite, elite, elite speed, but I look at you and I look at the way you're built. You're a football player. Those guys were track guys playing football. You are a football player that can run track. Exactly, man. Like, I I don't know. It's just God-given. Yeah. Or maybe my mom and dad just got some crazy genes. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't mom, know. Your mom was over there. She was pretending she was your sister. Because I walked in, I'm like, you and mom? She's like, nah, I'm your sister. I said, well, y'all know y'all. I knew y'all was related. And then she left it like, okay. She had some speed, too, though. She had she, some you had some speed, speed mom? <laughs> That's where you get it from. You got it from you? Okay. 
<laughs> Ma say she's faster than that. So you played. So what position did you play in high school? You were a receiver in high school or you were a running back? I, I did running back receiver. I did it all. And, and track, obviously track. So I didn't start running track to like 10th grade. Like right. A lot of people think I ran track my whole life. I'm like, no. Right. I'm a country boy, man. I just I just ran track because the football coach was were like, you always hey, the fastest? You, you fast. Right. Now, I wasn't always the fastest. Believe this or not, when I was in 10th grade, we had kids that was faster than me. Huh? Yeah. So what are they doing now? Where are they now? I need to know. They they got to be uh, like you know you know how it be man. Like every hood got like these kids guys that really that not disciplined and not disciplined and they just don't make it out. Right. You know what I'm saying? I was just one of the look. I was just one of the fortunate ones who listened to my mom. Right. A lot and made it out. So I want Tyreek Hill. And you can put yourself in there if you want to, or you can leave yourself out. He's like, I don't want to put myself in there. Don't ask me about no top five. Give me, I, I need it. I need it. I can't, man. I can't. Because, like, the way, because the way that I grade it is, bro, mm-hmm. I feel like if, if you look at all 32 football teams, right? Right. They, they go to your top five right there. 1A through 32 right there. Because. Man, you crazy. Stop it, Tyreek. Bro, bro. It, Given given the circumstances, if you put a guy in a certain system, they can go crazy. You no, feel me? I disagree. Everybody cannot be Justin Jefferson. I don't care. You, yes, I can, can, I can take guys. I can take guys. Name from, name a guy. I can no. I don't want to name any guys, but I'm saying that's that's what makes you unique. Every guy is skilled, skilled, bro. Let me ask you a question. Tommy. He said skill. I'm about to tell you. You, you done got me hyped. <laughs> he hyped a little bit. Now. Let, let, let me ask you a question. Okay. How many 30 million guys are there? How many 30 million dollar guys are there? Because that's what you told me to begin with. You told me I make 30 million. Why are they going to give somebody 30 million that ain't got no hands? All right, then. So why did they give Devontae Adams 30 million then? He turned down less money to go to. He turned. He took less money to go to hey, LA. Now, now you're making excuses. So look. No, 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 no. Tyreek. I can put Christian Kurt in my top five because I think, because I believe he's a top five five receiver in this league. You looking at me crazy. Yes, bro. Yes. 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 So how much I, I'm going to move along. You, you, <laughs> uh-uh. you got, okay. Let's argue. Let's <laughs> argue today. No, no, no. I'm standing up for my guys. I, I, I get it. Stand up for the receivers. But there, there, there's levels to this. I know levels to it, man. Given the circumstances, I feel like if you put if you put me in Atlanta right now, I feel like. No, with the, no, no, no. I'm talking about yeah, with the quarterback. That quarterback, obviously, the quarterback plays a big role. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, get, I, I I give you that. But everybody doesn't have the ability to do what you do and to do what Devontae does and do what Justin Jefferson or Stephon Diggs. That's not true. That is not true. You I say can, I put I, it. I can list 15 guys. And do what? That can go out there and put up 1,000 yards, 1,500 yards. But 1,000 yards is not anything. That's 62. That's 64 yards a game. That's not anything. So what's your argument? But I'm saying... <laughs> There's there's level there's a reason why that you get get what you do. There's a reason why Jefferson and those guys and Devontae get there's, there, there's more I feel like you just can't list five guys and just say here's a top five list. That that's just like saying, well, if somebody would have I, I can give somebody Michael Jackson's producer and he could have been Michael Jackson. That's a lie. I can give somebody the same song that I gave Big and Tupac and they can be Big and Tupac. That's a lie. I'm not. I'm not hearing your <laughs> argument right now. <laughs> there, are, there, are fi- there are fi- fifteen qualified. Like people be forgetting about Brandon Cook. So you Cook. Be, so you believe they be, they be forgetting about Brandon Cook. They be forgetting about Mike Evans. They be forgetting about Keenan Allen. The guys like that, like, oh, well, who well, really deserve it. But here's the me? thing. I'm not saying they're not Tyreek. I think you're missing the argument. What I'm saying. I'm not saying they're not good receivers, but they're tops to this. They're great companies, but everybody ain't Google. Everybody's not Apple. You can't say, well, I those believe- guys are Google and Apple though. Brandon Cook, Keenan Allen, they not like but, okay, that. Okay, okay, little, okay. Well, let's, oh let's, my let's God, Mike Evans, they not like that to you. I'm not saying, Tyreek, you're missing my point. I'm not missing your yes, point. Yes, you are. Those guys are top five receivers. So let me get let's, let's Jamal, Justin, top yes! five receivers. Yes, all of us top five. That's why I say it's one through thirty two. Like you. So can't, you. So there are no top five quarterbacks. You believe that every nah, quarterback? Nah, I see quarterbacks. Whoa, 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 what's the difference? Quarterbacks. Are different. What's the difference? Hold on, wait, wait, did I, are we missing something? Ah, why? So if I gave, if I gave, so you saying if I gave, let's just say for the sake of argument, Baker Mayfield, he gonna turn into Tom Brady. If he playing with me, yeah. <laughs> Come on, not. If he playing with me, yeah. Okay. That's all day. You see what he did last night? Game winning drive, ninety eight yards, went crazy. Now how you want it, Baker Mayfield? What you- a dub. <laughs> hey, Baker Mayfield, I'm on your side, bro. Come on. <laughs> you get. It. 
<laughs> you you keep telling them you got it thirty. So what? Well, let me ask you a question. When they cut the check and you get this big this big signing bonus and you look, you, I don't know maybe they did. I'm, I'm saying uh -huh. they gave you a check. Obviously the direct deposit. Uh huh. What was the first thing Tyree Witten got? Well, I I'm, I'm not I'm not too much of a crazy spender, but uh, we, we bought a we bought a nice size estate down in in Miami. Okay. Uh, spent spent a pretty penny there on that. And that was about it, man. No car, you're not a car guy. You no car, no bike. I mean, no. I, I mean, I bought my car like later down the road. I bought a 720. McLaren. Okay. I, whoa. So yeah, I bought a 720. Uh, and that's pretty much it, man. That's it. That's it. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a simple guy. You're I simple. Do, I drive a minivan to work every day. So. A minivan. Yeah, seriously, I drive a minivan to work every day. Tell me, it's a Sprinter. Nah, it's a minivan. <laughs> it's a Dodge Caravan. <laughs> With the wood panel on the side. Come on now, talk to me. Police, if y'all see this man in this minivan, pull him over. Windows tinted, everything. <laughs> how you got? How many more doors, Mom? Sip. So, come on, Reed. Come on, bro. I understand. You try to you try to lay low, key. You don't you don't want nobody to know that's Tyreek up you in there. You gotta lay low. <laughs> so when you got to Miami, obviously you mm -hmm. wanted to win. What was what was your number? What was your number one thing? What was the number one thing Tyreek wanted to accomplish? Because you got to see on your chest. That's yeah. saying something for a guy that leaves one locale, comes to another locale, and gets to see on his chest. Quarterbacks, obviously, quarterbacks normally quarterbacks have to see on their chest. But for you, and if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. Did you had? Did you ever have to see on your chest in Kansas City? I did. Okay. Um, my rookie year, uh, I was a special teams guy. Okay. So they they gave me the C for being a special teams. Okay. Guy. So yeah. So now you on. So you go to Miami and you get to see. So what was what was Tyreek's goal? What would, what did you hope to accomplish? Not only team wise but individually. Well, I, I always look at the big picture of things. Okay. Right? And you know, I, I I feel like like you say, everybody has value in this league, and not many people can do what other people can do. Right. You know, so signing the deal in Miami, you know, yes, that was great, but. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to prove to people that receivers are just as valuable as quarterbacks. Okay, okay. You feel me? Yeah. Um, we even seen it with Stephon Diggs. What he did Josh with Josh Allen. Me. Yes, we yes. We seen it with Jamal Chase. Burrow. With Burrow. And, you know what I'm saying, as great as those quarterbacks are, you know, they still need somebody to bail them out here right. and there. You feel Correct. me? Correct, yes. So I, I just wanted – to just show people the future of what receivers are going to look like. You okay. feel me? I mean, they may not look like me, but nah. <laughs> maybe just how Why valuable not? we are, man. Like, just start paying. I think a, a receiver more. that in the right system can look like you. That what you just told me? Yeah, they can. Jalen Waddle, for real. <laughs> there it is, right there. There it is. He can do exactly everything I can. You feel me? And I'm teaching him everything that that I've been taught. So. He can. Uh, they don't fear water like they fear you, though. Hey, no, don't, don't start yeah, this. Don't Tyreek, start Tyreek, this, bro. Don't Tyreek, start this. Tyreek. Don't no, start that's this. That's no knock on Jalen. No, I think he's phenomenal. I Ooh. think he's a he's a phenomenal. It's nice that, yeah, I mean, you've really never had anybody, and I know McCole, I mean, it's close, McCole, but to have somebody like that level speed, like when you and McCole was on the field, like, damn, we, who, we just got to get deep, just take off running safety, just get back as far as you can. Mm -hmm. That I don't know if there've ever been two receivers on a team. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, like I said, I, I was in the league when Sam Grady and 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 Willie Galt was on on the Raiders, and they would just just run by people, just just throw the go ball. Yeah, Willie Galt was crazy. <laughs> Willie, crazy Willie, speed. Willie had as a matter, Willie's from Georgia. Also, he went to Griffin. Um, so you go to you go to you go to Miami, and you're like, okay, I, I got. I need to show them. Why they gave me thirty mil? You go to you go to camp, OTAs, and you start. So what what was your goal? What what did you what did you what did you want the, your teammates to see about Reek when you first? Oh, got when him? I first got in there, man, I I I, hey, I, I told Xavier and hired the first day. I said I'm going at you every day in one on one training camp. I need the best because that's just me. When I was in KC, I did the same thing with all the DBs. Right. You can ask the DB coach. I I called out everybody. 
DBs and all. You know what I'm saying? That's probably why they I got not, rid of me. Cause I, I said, nah, I, my hamstring hurt today, Tyree. Yeah. Because I talk trash. <laughs> so every day, one-on-ones, I was like, Xavier Howard, I need that. Come on, let's go. Me and you, we, right. we, we first off, and we're going to set the tone. Set the tone. Practice. We're going to set the tone of okay, practice. Okay, It's you. only right. Because, I like that. I like that. Because, because check this out. The way that Coach McDaniel runs his team meetings, he's going to start with that. Two of the best guys on the team. Right. Highest paid guys on the team going at it. And they're not afraid of competition. So I'm like, yeah, once I let these guys know that I'm about my business and I work hard, I practice hard, and I practice fast, and I'm not here just for the money, they're going to realize that, hey, we need to lock in with this guy and, you know, follow, f- follow him, you know what I'm saying, and allow me to lead. And that's and those guys have... Is that, is that what you wanted? You wanted more of a leadership role? Oh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I see myself I, I, I see myself more as a, right. as, a, as a leader. Right. You feel me? Because yeah. I, like, I feel like I can do that. You right. You feel me? So. so. Some took it as shade. Some took it as you're taking a shot at Patrick when you're saying, said or saying that Tua throws the prettiest ball. Tua, I mean, you spoke in such glowing terms. And a lot of people are like, well, man, you know, man, he's just trying to hype his guy up. That's his guy. He's trying to give him some confidence. And some like, man, you can hype your guy without, you seem like, I think he's throwing shade. What were you hoping to accomplish by praising Tua and giving him that credit, although you had never played with him before? Well, I, I wasn't really looking to accomplish anything. You know, everybody knows that Patrick Mahomes is on a different level with his quarterback play. Right. You know, he's going to be special. You know, no matter who's there playing receiver for him, you feel me? He's an alien like that. You know, my whole thing was, you know, every quarterback is good at something. Right. You feel me? Right. Pat has a strong arm. He's accurate. But what I've seen from Tua is, you know, he may not have the strongest arm. Right. But just know, when you turn that ball, it's going to be in the center of your chest every right. time. Right. Like, it's going to be right there, catchable right. every single time. You know what I'm saying? And, like, I'm... I'm not here to throw shade at nobody. Right. Like, and Pat know that. He, he know I love him like a brother, no matter what. So, y- you know how the media is. They're just going to take stuff and run with it. You grew up, you're from Georgia, I'm from Georgia. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're a little further south than I am. You went to Co- you went to Coffee County High School. I think y'all the Trojans. Are y'all the Trojans? Coffee County Trojans. <laughs> Doug Douglas. And uh, when, when Tyreek was growing up, what did Tyreek want to do? Did you ever think about being a professional athlete? Like, I'm going to run track. I'm going to be in the Olympics. What did you want to do? What, what did you want to be? You really want to know what I want to be? I no, want to know. Gonna, I ain't going to say that. Yeah, I want to tell me. Come that. on, tell me. Uh, so, believe this or not, man, uh, my senior year, I had I, I had all kind of options of what I wanted to do. I, di- I didn't have the grades coming out, so I had to go to JUCO. Mm-hmm. So, but I had ran track my final year, and I didn't have no football scholarships. Right. You feel me? So... Ran track, I ran fast, I ran like a 10-1, and I ran a 20.1. And all these big college, colleges like LSU, Alabama, Florida State, they was all hitting me up like, hey, come run track for us. And I was like, I don't got the grade. So they was like, okay, you can go the JUCO route. Right. So that's how I learned about the JUCO route. Right. So I'm like, okay, I can go JUCO, and then I can come to y'all. They was like, yeah. So they recommended this JUCO called Garden City Community College. In Kansas, it? In Kansas. Okay. All, all these schools. They was like, go to Garden City, run track there, and then you can transfer to us once you get your grades up. So I go to Garden City. Once I get to Garden City, I'm, I'm, I'm just there for track. Right. But Garden City, they got a football team. I don't know if you know Nick Marshall. He was the Auburn quarterback. Yeah, Auburn quarterback. Yeah, 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 yeah. So Nick, he was one of my boys. I knew Nick from playing against Nick in high school. Okay. Nick was like, hey, Reed, man, you should come play football. So I go out to play football. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I start killing. Had you ever played football before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay, yeah. you play. Yeah. You, you, you play. I'm, I'm saying I played football in high, high school, school, but I didn't have no offers. Right. They sent me there to run track right. to Garden City. Right. But you so, only ran track your last year of high, high, high school, right? Yeah, I ran track and I played football. Okay, okay. So I did both, but both. I just didn't have no offers. Right, okay. So when I got to Garden City, Nick was like, come play football. I played football and I killed it. And then me, uh, that's when I began to like get all this, you know, uh, what you call it? Attention from yeah. like scouts and stuff, right. so, and I forget, and I forgot about what the track people had said. They was like, "Go to, uh, go run track at Garden City," and I forgot about them. <laughs> I'm like, "I'm I'm football now. Yeah, right. I'm back football yeah. now, baby." So, so once you got, once you uh, went to the football team, you forgot. So you didn't run track. I didn't. I didn't run track until my second year. I didn't run track. Okay. So you said you ran, you ran a 10-100 meters in high school. Mm-hmm. You ran twenty point one. one. 
That was the fastest time ever of a of a kid under eighteen at the time. Right. Like somebody just broke that recently. Right. Oh yeah, the, the uh, Terry and Knighton. Yeah, Terry and Knighton. That's he read nineteen forty nine. Yeah, that kid fast. <laughs> <laughs> that kid fast. So, I, uh, do you still have a state record? Because I think you ran twenty point nine in high school at Georgia, right? I, uh, is it still is it still standing? Believe it probably is. It probably is. Right. Probably it probably is still standing. Let Let's go ahead and get this out the way. I've had a lot of guys. They've hit me up, say, "Man, you need to stop talking about Tyreek, the fastest man in the NFL, because he's not." So I had is. DK. I, I had DK Metcalf sit in that very chair, and I said, "Hold on, you trying to tell me you faster than Reek, Cheetah, Ten? He said, "You give him as many nicknames as you want to. He can't outrun I'm gonna tell you like this. I DM DK Metcalf this offseason. I'm like, bro, pull up, let's race." Like, we can donate the money to charity. We can do 50000 on the line right now. Guess what he said? What? He sent me a picture of, of himself in a boot. Like, I'm in a boot, bro. Like, I'm like, bro, I don't even remember you getting hurt, bro. Like, when you got hurt? Okay. There's a guy on your team, uh, uh, Max uh, Breda. No, Mostert. Raheem Mostert. Oh, you, you you can ask him all the time. I, I told him at the end of this season, I'm, I'm bringing a briefcase full of 100000 and me and him going to race on the spot right there. And he ain't got to put up number 50. You will take the man money? Yeah, like, like you. I mean, uh, there's uh, uh, Marquise Goodwin. I think he cha- he talking about he can get you. Marquise Goodwin, like I've challenged him to many races. Like a lot of these guys, like they just get on TV and talk. But what I do is I DM them on the side trying to set stuff up for right. charity, but right. they don't want to do it. Like, like so, they just come on your show and just talk. I believe. Yeah. So you can say emphatically, empirically, that. You are the fastest player currently playing in the NFL. I'm the fastest player currently playing in the NFL. <laughs> like, ain't nothing, there's nothing needed to be said about that. That's it. So, wh- why do you all, so why do all these guys want to stake claim to your title? So I just like people trying to chase Jordan, right? right. You know how people chase Jordan and say, oh, man. like He the I GOAT. Know, he the go- hey, I'm, I know I'm the GOAT. Like, right. He the GOAT. Like, you feel me? Right. I'm not saying I'm the goat, but I know I'm the fastest. Right. You feel me? I, I, I'm definitely claiming that title. So Wait. if I if I were if I if I were to schedule race, I got you, DK, Raheem Mostert, Jalen Waddle, uh, the kid from that just came out at the Patriots. I think his name is Tyquan Thornton. Tyquan Thornton, yep. So I'm gonna I got five guys. I'm gonna put y'all on the track. What you want to run? You want a hundred or you want forty? Whatever those guys want to run, I let those guys choose. You gonna let them? I let them choose, bro. So you saying lose a pick? Lose a pick, whatever they want to pick, man. And the money go to charity. And the money go. If to I charity. if I can get if I can get charity to like okay, this is a hundred thousand dollars going to go to a, a great cause. You think they going to show up? I think two of the guys will show up. Then two of the guys going to realize that hey, we really about to lose. <laughs> like, Tyreek for real. I'm gonna show up on time. And you 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 did see DK at about two thirty. Run ten thirty three. At 230, he said if he dropped down to 200, 195, he said, you ain't got no chance. I'm just telling you what he told me. If he, if he dropped down to 200, then he going to be sorry at football. <laughs> <laughs> so which one he want? Which one he want? He want to be faster than me or he want to be good at football? <laughs> you better stick to what he know, <laughs> which is catching passes. So how, how much do you weigh right now? What, 190, 195? I weigh 195. Okay. So you wouldn't drop anything. You going you to get on the track and run 195. Like, look. Look, I'm still going to eat my Popeyes, go to the race, and then do what I got to do. Man, yeah, let's talk about that diet. Because when I got here, you eating Cheeto. I mean, you was eating uh, uh, Doritos. Mm-hmm. And your diet is still, your, your diet, you and DK, y'all got something in common because y'all diet is terrible. Look, my diet is straight from my mom's kitchen. <laughs> uh, you know, when I come home, have that fried pork chop ready. So, I, so what's the meal? Okay, Tyree wakes up. Do you eat at home or do you go wait, do you get to the facility? I eat at home. You eat at home. So what what is what is the breakfast? What's breakfast for Tyree? My mom usually cooks bacon, sausage, eggs, everything. <laughs> Grits. Grits. <laughs> you can't even move in the morning. You be walking, you be walking like the Michelin man in the morning. Like man, that. I feel I'd be ready to go back to bed. I, hey. eat, I eat all that yeah. bacon, I, grits, eggs. I don't sausage. miss by three meals because of my mom. Like crazy. <laughs> get me fine. Okay. So now, lunch, you at the facility, and you know they got gourmet. I mean, they lay it out. Oh, yeah, they lay it out. They lay it what, out. Whatever you, whatever you want, if you're pescatarian, if you vegan, if you paleo, whatever you want, these facilities can accommodate you. So what's lunch for Tyreek? Well, typically lunch is like kind of like 
we only get lunch for like twenty minutes because we because we jump from lunch straight to practice. Okay. So I can't. So you gotta eat. be light. You so gotta I, be light. I gotta I gotta eat light. Okay. So typically I do like a uh, I do like a shake and I okay. do like uh, like a something quick like a quesadilla or mm. nachos or right. something some quick. Damn, you know that's still like okay. Now, do you do dinner there or you wait till you get home tomorrow? No, I, go, I go on home and eat. So what you eating for dinner? I mean, she she really serve it up. Like she really it, it really be different. It varies from days. Depending on how she feeling, <laughs> if she in a good mood, she really gonna take care of me. But my favorite meal that that she makes, she make like a little Frito pie. Yeah. Like a little uh, what them chips called? Fritos. Frito with the Frito pie. And hey, I'm tripping. <laughs> Frito Frito chips. Yeah. She got cheese on the side. She got jalapenos. She got tomatoes and di- diced tomatoes. What else? Man, that's that's one of the best Hispanic meals of all time, right there. How often, how, mom, how often you cooking that? We just had the other day. God, <laughs> <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> that one, $1.95 right now. <laughs> Tariq, your final season in Kansas City, you had a, a 111 receptions, 1,239 yards, nine touchdowns. Did you go to Miami saying, I can beat that? I know what I did. That's the best season I've had as far as catches. I can beat that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Easy, easily. Because, because, like I said, it was some games that I only got two targets. And, right. You know, um, I would have to make up for it in other games and right. go for, like, 150 or 200. Right. And I knew once I got to Miami, you know, Coach Matt Daniel, he was going to feature me, you know, in a way that I've never been featured before right. in this league. Right. You know, so I'm real, I'm, like, I can say this a million times, I'm, I'm real grateful for being able to play for this organization, for this team, you know, for him, for just bringing me here, me and my family, man. I'm very thankful for that. Right. We talked, touched on it earlier. You guys got some, you know, you got to make up some ground. Mm-hmm. The game you lost last week didn't do you any did it solid. Buffalo's leading your division. You get a chance to play them again. Um, hold on, Buffalo. Hold on, we leading. We two and zero. Oh. We two and one. Two and one. But you, but but they're, but they have a better overall record. Oh than yeah, you yeah, got. yeah, yeah. So, yeah. you know, it goes overall record. Then it goes to the, if it comes down to it, it goes to the division record. How does how does you know you got to make sure you're in the playoffs because I obviously you know Kansas City that's it you know you just want to make the playoffs mm-hmm. because that's your goal like okay this team hadn't been to the playoffs in a minute they brought me in here for a reason I ain't here to just take their money I'm here to get them over the hump. Well, my message to all of the guys on the offensive side and defensive side is just you know let's just be us and let's just focus on one week at a time. You know, we can't look ahead and, and think about who we got or who's playing who. All we can do is control what we can control. Correct. And that's our next game, which is, you know, the loss, which is the L.A. Chargers. Right. So we're just, we just going to go out to this game, you know, look, looking to play with fundamentals, techniques, and come out with a dub, man, against a real good team. Right. They Their record may not show up, but they're a real good team, I, yeah. I believe. I'm looking at this. You guys, Chiefs have the number one passing offense. You guys have the number two passing offense. So it seems like everybody got everybody. Everybody should be happy. It was a it was a it was a, it was a win win. I think. No, nah, it wasn't a win win. <laughs> no, nah, I ain't gonna do like Kansas City lost the other one. They, no matter what, who they got, who, no matter what them picks, they're not gonna be Tyreek. You know, Tyreek, you you got a chance to get fitted for a gold jacket. You do understand that, right? I don't even, I don't even know what none of that mean, bro. You get fitted for a gold jacket. You go to football heaven. Football heaven. Now that's something right there. Right? <laughs> you go to football heaven. That'll be something right there. <laughs> See, my my goal was just to make it into the league. Right. But to be going, but just to be acknowledged for going into football heaven, that'll be something crazy right there. You. The Dolphins hadn't been to the playoffs since 2016. What would it mean to you, to the city, to Miami, that fan base? Tyreek comes in. And obviously, they've added some other pieces. I think Coach McDaniel, uh, Mac- McDaniel has done an unbelievable job scheming, mm-hmm. doing a great job of getting you in position so you can do what you do best, catch the football, and get that get down the field in a hurry. Mm-hmm. Jalen Waddle, you, uh, you guys have weapons. I'm looking at you, uh, uh, Wilson Jr., and you got uh, uh, Mostert, Mostert and yourself and Waddle and Gasicki and Smite. Guys, got I mean, Teron Armstead. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Line. We got we got some crazy guys on this. And team. they go out and make the chub, they make the trade for Bradley Chubb. Bradley Chubb. So the one thing I can say about the Dolphins, 
Y'all go, y'all all in. Yeah, like you shoved all your chips to the middle of the table. They really all in, you know, on this team, and they really all in on tour, and 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 that just goes to show, you know, how successful he's been right. this year. You feel me? Right. Because I feel like no team would do that. You know, like they wouldn't go out and just trade for like one of the best DNs on, in in this league. You know, if they, if they truly didn't believe that this is our window right now. Right. You feel me? So they understand. Um, Mr. Greer understands, and obviously this whole organization believes in, you know, our, our quarterback. So looking forward for the challenge, man. Like making the playoffs would would be like a dream come come true, man. Um, as as a player, you know, I, I know I've I've been fortunate enough to be on teams to make it to the playoffs. Right. But you've never be, not made the playoffs yeah, in your yeah. whole NFL career. You've never not made the playoffs. But to be able to like actually help a team. I know right, that's been I, a long time since they've been in the playoffs. Exactly. And now you show up on the scene, flat. Like, your daughter's not a coincidence, right? It, it just hit differently, man. You know? So. Right. Talk to because we, we see Mike McDaniel. We remember him singing the song last year. We see him on the sidelines and they ask him, and he said, No, that wasn't that wasn't him. I Me, mean, I I effed up. I effed up. So what's he really like? Oh, he's a great coach. Um, his energy. The way he leads his team, um, the culture he has brought to this organization has been great. You feel me? Yeah. Um, everybody loves him. He he has a different kind of swagger, and he's one of those coaches that anyone can get along with. Right. You feel me? Um, so, I I mean, I, I think the world of him, and I obviously love playing for him, and he makes my job a whole lot easier. Like, I feel like when I was playing with Coach Reed, I feel like, I don't know. I just had like a different kind of pressure because Coach Reed was like one of them goaded coaches. Like, it's like you grew up watching Coach Reed yeah. on TV, and it's like, <laughs> bro, like this dude, Coach Reed, is a legend, bro. I don't want to mess up. Right. But it's like with Coach Matt Daniel, it's like you don't want to mess up, but it's like, dang, bro, like this dude really believe in me. Right. You feel me? Because like it'll be some plays where like I drop a pass, and he'll be like, Reed, I know you were supposed to catch that. Like. I know you were supposed to catch that. I knew you weren't trying to drop it. You feel me? Mm -hmm. It's like a different vibe from KC. Are there any similarities between uh, Coach McDaniel and uh, uh, Andy? Or the what, what? What are some of the similarities, and what are the major differences? Well, both of them. I, I feel like both of them are real open to change, and they're open to like any ideas, any fresh ideas that are that are pertaining to opening up this offense even more. Right. And that's what makes them great at what they right. they they both do. Right. Which which puts the ball in their in their playmaker's hands. You feel me? So coach Andy can can dial up a crazy play and put it and put the ball in 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 somebody's hands and coach McDaniel can do the same thing. You feel me? And just take us to a, a different you know spectrum and it, it'll go crazy. How about how about this here? Who's the best duo? Receiver? Ten of wide receivers. Okay, we got AJ Brown, Devontae, mm. Stephon Diggs, Gabe Davis, Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, we got you and Waddle, and you know what? Just for good measure, I'm gonna throw I'm gonna throw a uh, uh, CD and uh, and uh, Michael Gallup in there. Who the best two receivers? All I'm gonna say is stats. Stats speak. No, 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 I don't know. I'll, you know that? Ain't nobody got no stats. Who got the stats? For the people out there watching, stats speak for themselves, man. Who got the best stats? Uh, if somebody number one and number five in the in the chart of receiving yards. Stats speaks for themselves, man. That's all I got to Would say. Would that be you? In a, in I, a I don't know. I have no <laughs> idea. When you, when you got to the league, who, who was your mentor? Who, when you got to Kansas City, put their arms around you and said, okay, hey, Rick, this this how we do it. Hmm. See, I, I had I had Jeremy Macklin. Mm -hmm. I had Albert Wilson. Mm -hmm. And I had Chris Conley. All three of those guys were very helpful in my career. But... I feel like once I got to the league, those guys knew that, hey, we got somebody that run 4-2 in here, and he know how to play ball. He coming to get my job. He coming to get my job. Him and – him and because it was me and Demarcus Robinson. Right. That was like those two young dudes. They don't talk. They work hard. Mm -hmm. And they make sure that we get our Popeyes on Sunday. Ah! I mean, on, 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 sa on Saturday, Saturday, Saturday go before we try to travel. These dudes <laughs> – these dudes about their business. So they knew once me and D-Rob – we showed up at practice like that, and we were very accountable. They was like, yeah, we in trouble. But the one guy that I really could say I, that really helped me get to where I am right now, man, Kelsey, he really put he really put his arms around me yeah. and really taught me the way, man. Like, 
we we don't play the same position, but he really like really broke down like Reed. Like we all know you fast. We all know you got God given this and that and that. But there's a certain way you gotta play this game. There's a certain time you can use all that. And now I now, now when I'm thinking, I'm like, yeah, you're right. And I'm telling Jalen the same. I be telling Jalen Waddle the same thing. Like we got God given, but there are times that we use that, and there are other times that we can turn into little West Wilkers and just route stuff up in the slot. You right. feel me? Mm-hmm. And that's and that's the part of the game that I didn't know early on in my career. You know, you feel me? Yeah. What's your favorite? What's your favorite touchdown celebration that you've done? Mm. You, I mean, the backflip. Probably when I, when I did the the F one car Sunday night. Uh huh. I did the F one car, and probably that one. That's probably like my rookie year. What What made you start to do the P sign? Because that that's I mean I mean you like bro, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> so me, man, I'm a, I'm I'm all about peace and love. Like I'm right. all about spreading aro- awareness, man. And like, I, I believe just one time, my my rookie year, I was running to the end zone, and I'm like, okay, I don't know what to do. So I just threw up a peace sign. Right. You feel me? So I just did it there, and then I just began to do it all the time. I, I began to get cocky with it. Defenders be right beside me, like, hey, <laughs> just throw it up in their face. <laughs> so so let me. What, what would happen? If you threw up the peace sign and all of a sudden the dude got a burst of energy and snatch you. You know what? You I, don't you don't believe that can happen? I don't believe it can happen because I don't feel like nobody can catch me. And and that and that and that's not that that's not me saying that I'm the, just the fastest. I'm just saying, like I'm just confident that I'm that far away from you. Right. Like like I know positioning I know positioning and I know my leverage. Right. Like I'm by you now, so I'm going to throw this up. Right. You feel me? Because you still stuck in quit saying. Right. And I'm like on a treadmill and I'm gone. Right. They you're tight in. You can say you tried to hit the gritty. Yeah, that was embarrassing, right? <laughs> <laughs> you like, bro, what did you when he got to the salad, you say, bro, what what you what what was that? What are you doing? I was when, That's the gutty. That he, ain't the gritty. When he did, I was like, bro, are you hurt? Like, <laughs> are you okay? Like, what's going on with that gritty? And it was like, bro, like it didn't look like that in the mirror. I'm like, yeah, you got that right. <laughs> you like, I hope, I hope it didn't look like in the mirror, that in the mirror. You still came out, and did it. You know what's crazy? I told him to continue to do it because people actually hated it that bad. That right. They actually liked it. Right. Which is crazy. So I told so him. So that could be a signature. Next time you score, keep doing it. Right. You played the Chiefs a couple of years ago. I ain't never seen a guy have 200 yards in a quarter. Mm-hmm. When you had, when you got out to that kind of start. Did 300, 400 yards cross your mind? You know what? I, you had two, I, over 200, 203 yards and I think three touchdowns in the first quarter. I Like, I, I wasn't even thinking at the time. You know what? I, I was just thinking about winning the game. Right. Like, maybe if the game was like, maybe if it was up by 21 the whole game, right. I would have been stat checking. But the game was so close against the Bucks that, you know, I, I didn't even have time to just think about stats. I would just go go line up, make a play, and then Pat would be like, hey, I'm going to come back to you. I'm coming back to you this way right. right here. And I'll be like, okay, bet. Let's do it. So it never crossed my mind, not, not once. Because I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I see 203. I'm like, he got a chance at Flipper's record. Flipper did 339 on a Monday. On a, uh, I think it was a Sunday night game against the Saints. He was with the Rams. Mm-hmm. He did 339. 15 catches, 339. You kind of feel it, though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You, I'm you, like, you kind of feel it, though. 200 like, in the first like, quarter. I got like, like all I need is like 50, 50, another 50. That ain't asking too much. I just got 200. I know I can get 50 a quarter for the next three. But it's like defensive coordinators are so smart now. Like, it's like, you're not finna. You're not finna keep doing that. Because they play man, and all of a sudden they went to cover two. Yeah, because they, they played man the first few possessions of that game. Right. It, it was like. After that, they was like, you know what, y'all, you're not gonna keep doing our guy right. like that. We're gonna play, we're gonna play two man. We're gonna put him off and let him play inside. We're gonna put the safety over top. We're right. not gonna do that. Right. Growing up in Coffee County, did, did you live on a farm? Did you have animals? Did I mean? So, so what what was life like for you in Coffee, Coffee County? It was great. Um, I didn't live on no farm. I didn't live on a ranch, but I just lived in a in a typical um, in a typical home. It, it was in the, it was it was it was kind of in the country. Right. It was it, it was away from the city, so I would have no, to walk. No, Coffee County like, is country. I would, I would have to walk. If you like, live, unless you live in Atlanta, you you in the country. I I, I would have to walk like two <laughs> miles to the city. What? Yeah, I did that too. Yeah. 
I remember one time I, I ran like 15 miles from like city to city. Crazy. But what? Was somebody chasing you? Nah, you know, like you was, know, was mom gonna whip you? Nah, my mom told me to be home by by a certain night. She was like, make sure you home by one o'clock a.m. I was seeing, I was seeing like my little girlfriend at the time. You yeah. Know? And my mom was like, I am not gonna come pick you up. You gotta be home. So I had to run 15 miles to 15 miles, and I did it. Ma, you let him run 15 miles. <laughs> he, over, he over there laughing with her head down. <laughs> uh, so you didn't ride horses? You didn't do anything like that? I know how to ride a horse. <laughs> you know what? You speak very highly of your grandparents. Um, I was raised by my grandparents. Obviously, have a great... They did an unbelievable thing for me. You spoke about your grandmother and... Uh, you said, you know, you get back home a couple of times a year because, you know, your grandparents still live there. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the influence your grandparents had on you. Well, my grandparents, they raised me um, throughout throughout my whole entire childhood. So they really inspired me. They really, you know, grew me to who I am today. They made me into the animal I am today. That hungry guy who who, who doesn't take losing easily. You feel me? So I'm very prideful in everything that I do. I'm very thankful for, for them, for raising me this way. Um, and yeah, I, I had a great life. I had a great childhood, man, growing up. I had everything that, that I wanted. You know, if, 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 if I didn't have it, they would, work, they, would work their tail, they would work their tails off to get it. So very blessed to have them in my life still to this day. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Your grandparents, it's something special, something to be said, that people that inspired you, that helped you, are able to be there and witness and see Tyreek this big to this big and to see what you've been able to accomplish. What was that like for you when you're grand, when you're like, Grandma, I don't know if you call it Granny, Grandma, Big Mama, I'm going to the NFL, I'm doing this, and the accomplishments, and the Super Bowls, and the Pro Bowls, and the All Pros. What was that like? Well, like, like any typical grandmother, you you know how that is. They're gonna be like, nah, like they still gonna look at you as as a baby. <laughs> like, so my grandma, she still look at me as a as a little boy still. Yeah. Like, she still think I'm about this tall. <laughs> like, nah, you don't supposed to be doing that. But but my granddad, he he's like he's like proud of me every day. He calls me and like, man, I can't believe you doing this, dog. Right. Like it's still it's still shocking to me that I can get on YouTube and and look up your highlights in the NFL and you and you doing everything that you said right. you were gonna do. So for me, man, to be able to make them proud and my parents proud and just everybody around me proud, man, like it, it's it's so real sometimes. Like I'm not able to like take it all in sometimes. And right. Be thankful for just being who I am. Right. So, man, I'm looking. I mean, this is um, impressive. You was on the gold medal winning team uh, in the four by one in Barcelona. Uh huh. You won the bronze medal in the two hundred meters in the, uh, the Olymp ju uh, junior. I guess, I guess that we call that the junior Olympics, junior right? Junior Olympics, yep. And then you won in high in high in track and field the five A state meet. You won ten one nine, and won twenty point one four. I mean that. Hold who who would have thought? So you got thought? the best because I, I I won the best performance trophy in tra in triple jump. In in eighty six, so you got both. So you got both best performance trophies. Mm -hmm. Who would have thought, man? One guy like in I, Jefferson. I, you, you still have it in Jefferson. Still, still in Jefferson. Who would have thought, man? Because believe this or not, my junior year I ran like a ten eight. Um, How the hell you go from ten eight to ten one? I have no idea, man. <laughs> like a lot of people thought I was taking stuff. It was like, hey, he's got to be on something. But nah, like it's just like. The relationships I grew, like my track coach that I had, his name was Jerry Hill. And a lot of people think he's my uncle or something, but he's not. He's like, he's a white guy. And mm -hmm. he's, like, he's my track coach. Like me being, like me, me being able to connect with him on a different level and, and him just understanding who I am as a person, as an athlete, like the way that we just connected, like he truly believed in who I was. Mm -hmm. And his, his, like our first conversation, he was like, Reek, like, this is our year that we're gonna win state. And this is a kid who just came off running 10-8. And I'm mm -hmm. like, bro, like the kid just ran a 10-3 last year. How right. I'ma run, how I'ma drop like that? He's like, no, I see it. I see it in you. Like, it's just you don't train. 
So he said that and I began training and then, you know, everything just began to take off in the right direction. I never practiced long jump, but I won that. So you, hold up, so you got the high point trophy also? Yeah. No, 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 we got second place in the high point trophy as a team. No, I'm saying, but you won the high, so individual. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you won the 100, the 200, and the long jump. And the long jump. You know, I won the high point trophy too. <laughs> you know, you won the high point trophy. I on, say, hey, that was, I won an 85. But, so, here's, you mentioned high school. You had to go the JUCO route because you didn't do the necessary work or the steps. I, did, I didn't have the grades. Why? Were you just bull jiving? I was just, I was just bull jiving. Typical, typical, typical high school guy. Typical high school athlete. You chasing the girls? I mean, cheetah, <laughs> cheetah, your boy, your cheetah boy, was a fan for a reason. Cheetah was a ladies' man back in the day. You feel me? Yeah. You feel me? Uh, I, I used to get around with the honeys a lot. Stay out late. And uh, yeah, I just didn't apply myself in school right. until I realized that I actually had the opportunity in front of me. Like, I didn't start applying myself. The graduation test was like two weeks away. Right. And I didn't start applying myself to like a week away from the graduation test. And I'm like, bro, like what did I just screw my life, my my senior year of high school away and I could have been going D1. Right. So. So now you realize, yeah, I'm gonna have to go, in order to make my dreams come true, I'm going to have to go an alternate route in order to get back on the road that I and need to be on. That's when I began to run track and all the track offers began to come. And okay. that's when they sent me to Garden City. Okay. They send you to Garden City. So my thing is, you had, you mentioned LSU, you mentioned Alabama, you mentioned a lot of big schools. You didn't mention Oklahoma State. Mm -hmm. What made you choose Oklahoma State? That's yeah. a long, that's a, Oklahoma's a long way from Georgia. At least Louisiana and Alabama so, close. So my mom lived in Oklahoma. Oh, okay. She lived in Oklahoma. And then I had this whole fascination with Tavon Austin going to West Virginia and okay. being like this big star. Right. Having like 544 yards in one game. Yep, and I'm yep. like, bro, I can be just like this dude, bro. I right. move like him. I'm we we may be the same speed. We I'm taller than him. I can do I can do I can right. do that too. Right. So I'm like, I'm gonna commit to Oklahoma State, go to the Big 12, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna go first round in the draft. That right. was my goals. Right. You go first round. Go first round. That was my goals. You go to Oklahoma State. You have an incident, mm -hmm. and you got dismissed from the team. What did you learn? What did Tyreek learn from that incident? Hmm. What did I learn, man? Uh, I had to grow up real fast. Mm -hmm. So once I got dismissed, I had to move all the way back home. So you came all the way back to Georgia. I came all the way back to Georgia. Now with my you know. Hands. When you leave, everybody's not happy that you left. There are a lot of people that was like, yeah, I told y'all Tyree wasn't going to do nothing. Yeah, that's like, that, that, that just typical talk, though. Yeah. That's just typical talk, though. So you go, you get back home. What was Tyree's game plan? Because you're home. You, I mean, life was was good. I mean, in Bedlam, you return a punt return 92 yards. Damn. You 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 the to, you the toast of steel water. Come on, I'm here. I was him. I was I was up yeah, here. I was, was all the way up here. So now you got to go all the way back to Georgia. So what's going through Tyreek's mind? You you and your mom, your grandma's house. You laying in the bed at night like, damn, what have I just done? Did I just f my life up? What did I do? Nah, man, it, it it was just one of them typical college stories about a football star and a girl. Like you you know how it is. People yeah. just bang bang bang. He did this. This is he say she say moment. So right. we're not gonna get into all that. But what I will say, when I went back to Georgia, um, I went back to Georgia with my grandparents, and like I had I had completely lost everything, friends, family. A lot of people not believing in me, but I still had my core unit. Right. I had my grandparents. I had my mom. I had my dad. My yeah. sister. I still had those people that believed in me. Yeah. That's all you need. So as long as you got the core, you good. As long as, long, as long as I got the core, I'm good. So. I didn't have no plan of going to school. I was like, I'm gonna sit, I'm gonna sit and chill for a minute. And like you say, you you gonna have those people that was like, yeah, I told you, Tyree, he's gonna be back. Mm -hmm. it, it, it's typical. It's typical. It's <laughs> typical. Um, so my granddad, he get us a job at this wood plant. So you know when you you go to the wood plant and you, I'm sticking a wood inside of a, a thing and it's and you, I don't, I, don't, I, I can't remember. Mm -hmm. It's a wood plant, so right. I'm doing that. I did that for like two months. And I don't know, I really believe in everything happens for a reason. Correct. I got a call from this school. School called me, they're like, hey, this Tyreek? And I'm like, yeah, this Tyreek. And it's a, it's, it's a school in Tennessee, Ch Chattanooga. So they're like, yeah, man, you can come up here and go to school. Like, we, we heard about your story, you can come up here and go to school. 
So I tell my mom, she's like, oh yeah, we going back to school to play ball. So I tell her that I drive literally eight hours to go to Tennessee from South Georgia all the way to Tennessee. Mm -hmm. I get all the way up there. The dude was like, you got all you gotta do is just talk to the president. I get all the way up there. The dude is like, bro, we can't accept you. What? Yeah, exactly. I'll, uh, hold on. You know, got hold on. Exactly. That's I, that been I drove by myself. Black. I drove by myself too. Cause he, I drove all the way up there to talk to the president, the head coach, athletic director. They all was up there. So once I got up there, I ain't even see him. He just called me. He was like, "Yeah, you up here?" He was like, "Yeah, we can't accept you, man, because of the situation." And Oklahoma. you know, y'all could have called me on the phone when I was in Georgia. When I was like three, like when I was leaving, y'all could have told me that. Yeah. So I called my mom. I'm like real sad. I'm like, man, I'm about to hang it up, mom. And my mom, she was like, hey, man, don't look, don't worry about that. Just come home. God got you. So as I'm, believe this or not, as I'm driving home, I get another call from West Alabama. So the coach called me. He's like, Reek, you ready to play some football? I'm like, Man, I ain't Who gonna, is this? I'm like, nah, man, I ain't wanna talk right now because the school just turned me down. Right. They like, I'm like, nah, I ain't wanna play no ball. He's like, Reek, I got the transcript. I'm ready. West Alabama. I said, send me a picture of it. He sent me the picture of the transcript. Him and the A D, the athletic di athletic director, the president, and the head coach, they all on the phone. Yeah, come on, we we want you. So I <laughs> let me type in Alabama. <laughs> I'm four hours away. I'm on the way. So I called my mom. I'm like, Mom, I just got a call from West Alabama. They say they want me. She was like, yeah, yeah, hey, let's go, let's go, let's go. So I go there, I get there, and I play literally in the game. The game was the next day. What? Crazy. Game was the next day. I returned two punts in the same game, which is crazy. You hit them up. I hit them up like, Coach, I'm on the way. So I scored two times in the game. Wow. You parlay West Alabama. Mm -hmm. You become a late-round draft pick. Fifth round. I got a very similar story. I ended up then with Prop 48, ended up going to Savannah State, the best decision of my life. Uh, I go in the seventh round, you win the fifth round. How motivated were you getting there? Because you're like, because I'm thinking to myself, man, this is my this is my last opportunity. I mean, I'm I mean, I'm not no first rounder. I ain't guaranteed no roster spot. Well, I I like I knew I had the talent, you know, to play with anybody, you know, but. My granddad, like he's he's such a huge advocate in my life. He'll be he like he told me, man. Once you get that opportunity, dog, just don't look back. Just don't look back. And there are no friends in the NFL. You know, a lot of guys that try to be your friend. A lot of guys try to do this and tell you to do that, do that. But really, it's all about saving their own jobs. So that was my mindset going. That in. happened to me, Reek. I had a guy I didn't know the, I didn't know to play. I asked the guy we competing for the job. He said, "Go in there and do that." Guess what I did? He lied to you. I did that. Guess what it was? Wrong. <laughs> yeah, we, we got some I, guys like I mean, that. but what I couldn't say, well, coach, he told me wrong. I should have known what I had to do. Like, lesson learned. Lesson learned. So yeah, man, what, what, like once my once my granddad told me that, I got locked in. I was like, yeah. I'm mean, there's nothing stopping me. I'm you were the last you were the last wide receiver on the depth chart because you were drafted mainly as a returner mm -hmm. and you were did you go out there with and say, every day I'm going to get better? I'm going to give them a reason. I'm going to give them the reason to give me an opportunity to get on offense. Yeah, I'm here to I'm gonna return punts and kickoffs and all that stuff, but I got my eye on one of them receiver spots. I got my eye on that being on the offensive side of the football. So I was the backup to Jeremy Macklin, and I would go in for him when, when he was tired. Right. And then I would make plays, the same plays he would make, yeah. but I would do them like five times more exciting. Yeah, yeah he get like, 10 yards, you get 30. They'll be like, oh, who is, who is this guy right here? He's a return guy. Yeah. So like, man, I like I say, man, my, my mindset was like, once I get this spot, I'm right. not looking back, man. Right. You didn't look back. Does it does it bother you that people always mention your size? Because yeah, I mean, your pro day you measured five eight and a half. Mm -hmm. That don't. I mean, no, nah, that that really don't bother me because I, mean, I, I feel God like could, God could make you six foot two and still let you run four two. It really, it, really, it, really, it really don't bother me, man, because I, I feel like you can't measure a guy's dedication and preparation in his heart yeah. to how much how much passion he got into his craft. Correct. You feel me? Yep. Like I say, I, I play football. Right. Now, you can line me up at receiver. You can line me at running back. I feel I feel like I'll still be successful at both. I, I may not be able to get you a fourth and one, 
like and running through the hole, right. running somebody over. But I'll be able to make you a play. Right. Like, I'm not gonna run nobody over, but I'm gonna be able to get that fourth and one. It may not look the way you thought it was gonna right. look. It ain't gonna look like Derrick Henry. It ain't gonna look, look like <laughs> Derrick Henry, but it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna, gonna happen. Change. We're gonna move the chain. You feel me? <laughs> so I I just I just play football, man. You know what? I would. You challenge you say both. Numerous you, of times. Numerous of times. Hold on. I even DM'd. I DM'd him too. Reek. I got the receipts in my phone. Reek, I'm not saying, Reek, I'm not saying that you didn't do that. But I'm saying, were you like, do you realize who that is? Yeah, he washed up. Oh, I love him, baby. baby. Oh. He washed up. You saying boat washed up. Like, there comes a point in your life where you get older and the new generation come in. Like washed up, bro. Right? So you believe? So you believe if you if you say look, you say I'm gonna give you six months to train, do what you need to do, and he says okay, we are gonna run a forty. You could beat Usain Bolt in the forty. I'm definitely beating him. If there's a forty yard dash between me and Usain Bolt, I'm definitely beating him. Now, if you go maybe eighty, he may got a chance. He got a chance. He got a chance then. But if but no NFL player got a chance in any distance, 40, 60, or 100. Yeah, no NFL player got a chance at 40, 60, maybe even five. Like, <laughs> ain't no chance at nothing. You and I talked earlier. You've gone to the Pro Bowl every single year. You've been a three-time first-team All-Pro. I believe it's about to be four. I believe, Tyreek, you're on a Hall of Fame trajectory. And we kind of touched on it briefly. What would it mean? given where you came from, mm -hmm. the obstacles and the detours that you had to take to reach the ultimate destination, what would it mean for you to have to one day, I don't know who would be your presenter, your mom, grandma, sister, brother, I don't know, maybe you have a son, he'll be old enough to present you. What would it mean to have someone put a gold jacket on you? I don't know, man. I, I probably get emotional for real, <laughs> you know, just thinking about all the adversity I had to face, mm -hmm. thinking about, you know, the situations I've been in in my life mm -hmm. and just just the things I've had to do to get to this point in my career. Right. Like the, I'm, when, when I say sacrifices, I mean the workouts, you know, making sure that I'm I'm up early in the morning for workouts um, and stuff like that. Because like they like days get hard, man, when you're doing it alone, man. Right. Especially like when you're training. Do you mainly train alone? You don't train with a group of guys. You yeah, like mainly I, I by train, yourself. I train alone. Okay. I train with Dub, uh, Keith Williams. He's the receiver coach for okay. the, uh, Raven. Okay. And I train with him. So me and him be up. Me and him used to be up early, six a.m. in the morning. Right. Just like it's a regular season. And you run alone. You lift alone. Yeah. I like to I like to do everything alone. Do you? Yeah, it's either me and Dub or or it's me and my me and my granddad. Mm -hmm. So it's just the way that I I rather I rather have it. Congratulations on all your success, continued success, stay healthy, and the best of luck this season. Thank you. Appreciate that, bro. Tyree Hill, ladies and gentlemen. Sacrifice, hustle paid the price, wanna slice, got to roll the dice, that's why, all my life, I've been grinding all my life, yeah. all my life, been grinding all my life, sacrifice, hustle paid the price, wanna slice, got to roll the dice, that's why, all my life, I've been grinding all my life.